Let's take a look at depreciation today. We have two different videos here. Uh, the first part of depreciation, we're going to talk about regular uh, depreciation that is required by the IRS. Now, what depreciation is in terms of accounting and the IRS for taxation is a process of allocating and deducting the cost of assets over their useful lives. In other words, if I have a piece of equipment that's going to last me 10 years, depreciation is that process of spreading over the cost over the 10 years that I'm going to get use of that asset. Now, typically you think of the word depreciation and you think, oh, something has gone down in value. It is depreciated in value. This is not what it means either for taxes or for accounting. It means taking the cost and spreading it out over the useful life. And so not how much it's worth. So if I spent $1,000 for a piece of equipment and I spread it evenly, uh, which we call straight line depreciation in accounting, um, over the 10 years, the $1,000 divided by 10 years is $100 a year. So after the first year, I've taken $100 off. That means there's still $900 book value on, um, on my asset section of my balance sheet. Okay, that we are not even remotely suggesting that this piece of equipment is worth $900. Um, typically, things are going to depreciate more in the beginning uh, of their useful life, and it's probably worth less than that. It could, by some chance, be even worth more than that. But we're not saying this is what it's use. We're just saying, so far, we have depreciated one-tenth of the use, and we got, you know, uh, nine more years of use of this asset. Now, land is not depreciated ever because the useful life is infinity. So if I took a $1,000 piece of equipment and divided it by the 10-year useful life, that gives me $100 uh, dollars per year. For 10 years and then at that point I have fully depreciated that piece of equipment but land since the denominator is affinity if I spent a thousand dollars on a piece of land and divided it by infinity well you can't do that in math so we just don't depreciate land because it's useful forever um, and so it just it just sits on the balance sheet at whatever we paid for it and it never gets depreciated. It never gets to go into the income statement. Now we also have to keep in mind uh, the topic of maintenance versus depreciation. Maintenance expenses are incurred to keep an asset in good operating order so that we can get to that 10 year useful life. And deduct, depreciation refers to deducting part of the original cost of the asset, not the maintenance. So if that $1,000 piece of equipment that we bought, and maybe we've depreciated it three years so far, so that's $300, we still have $700 left, but we do some kind of repair or maintenance on there. We do not add the repair or maintenance onto the cost of that equipment and depreciate it. The repair and maintenance, whatever we spend on that, is just helping to make it to the 10 years. That, uh, that is just deducted as an expense on the Schedule C or, you know, in your income statement if you're talking about accounting, okay? It's just going to be repairs and maintenance expense. Straight line depreciation is what we talked about in Accounting 101, and you've probably talked about it in other classes. 
It's easiest for accounting purposes. It's calculated as uh, up in the numerator, the cost of the asset minus any salvage value. Salvage value is what uh, management thinks they will be able to sell this thing uh, once they're done using it, once the their useful life is over, they could maybe still sell this thing. And we divide that depreciable base or depreciable cost, which is cost of the asset minus salvage value, we divide that by the useful life. And then the same amount, so this is the $1,000, and if we didn't have any salvage value, um, that would be 1,000 minus zero in the numerator, divided by the 10-year useful life, 1,000 divided by 10 is $100 a year, and that same amount is taken every year. Now, in the world of accounting, we do have a few rules about, well, the first year, unless we bought it, you know, right on Jan the beginning of first week of January, other than that, maybe we only, maybe we buy it in June, well, you know, we're only getting a half a year's use out of it that first year. So we may uh, take only a half a year the first year and then tack off that other half a year on the end. The modified accelerated cost recovery system, known as MAKERS, for tax purposes, allow these capital assets to be written off over a period identified in tax law with no salvage value. In other words, if we look at that formula for straight line depreciation up above that is used for gap and for accounting purposes, okay, we have the cost of the asset that is very objective. We have a receipt for how much we paid for that thing. And so there's no fudge in it. The salvage value is fudgeable. Okay. Management decides how much is the salvage value. And then the useful life in our denominator, management decides how much is the useful life. So two out of those three numbers in that formula is up to management to choose, and the IRS doesn't like that, okay? They don't want any, any wiggle room for management to maybe do stuff differently, how they feel like it should be done, as opposed to um, how the IRS thinks it should be done. So what the IRS says is that... Um, you cannot use any salvage value, so salvage value is always zero, and the IRS is going to tell you how much is the useful life, depending on what kind of um, asset it is. Now, the makers, it says modified, accelerated. Accelerated means that more depreciation is taken in the earlier years. So we're not spreading it evenly over the 10 years. We'll get more depreciation on that equipment in the early years, but then way less in the later years. It'll still, if it's a $1,000 piece of equipment, we're still only going to depreciate $1,000. Only instead of doing it evenly $100 a year for 10 years, we'll maybe get $150 a year, you know, um, or more the first few years, and then the last few years will get way less than $100 a year. So um, that's what accelerated is. It's accelerating or speeding up the depreciation in the early years. This accelerated method makers uh, of makers is used for all assets except real estate. So real estate is land, of course, is still not depreciated at all, and buildings, which is depreciated on a straight line basis, except that once again, the IRS says zero salvage value, and the IRS is going to tell you how much useful life for that building.
Okay, so each asset is depreciated according to an IRS specified recovery period. So the two main ones, and that uh, one of those tables is on D2L uh, for recovery periods for all classes of assets. And so you can look at that table. The main two you need to uh, concentrate on is the five year and the seven year. Okay, almost all of our personal property periods for this class are going to be either five year or seven year. So the, what's included in those two, if you just memorize that, you won't even need to look at this table. So the five year is computers, cars and light trucks. If you depreciate the car and light truck, okay, um, typically what we do in our class and what's often done out in the real world is that we use the standard mileage method, which we have talked about already, okay? And if you use the standard mileage method, that uh, for 2019 was 58 cents a mile. So that 58 cents a mile takes in it takes depreciation is part of that 58 cents of how they came up with the 58 cents so you can't also add depreciation if you're taking standard mileage method but you we know that you could do the actual method when you're doing cars uh that uh, you can take the actual gas and oil and insurance and repairs and everything that you paid, multiply it by how much percentage of use you're getting of that car for business. And you could also calculate then a depreciation, which would be on a five-year basis. We won't be doing any of that, although we'll talk briefly about car depreciation. Uh, but for the most part, we're going to use the standard mileage method, so you won't have to worry about whether cars are five-year or not. Office equipment, such as copy machines, fax machines, things like that, pieces of equipment that are in an office, they're also five-year equipment. Seven-year equipment is any kind of furniture in the store or office, and any other kinds of equipment other than computer equipment or office equipment, which is both of those are five-year stuff. So any other kind of equipment be besides those equipments is all seven-year stuff. Okay, so pretty simple. Depreciation is determined using the IRS tables. So the maker's rates are found in table 7.2, and I've also loaded that up on D2L, okay? The rates are multiplied by the original cost, and we oftentimes call that the basis. The salvage value is not used, and the tables are based on a half-year con convention. That means we're gonna, it, it already takes into effect that it doesn't know when during the year you first bought this piece of equipment. So you might have bought it in early January. You might have bought it the last week of December. So Makers is built on the fact that you're going to get a half a year of depreciation your first year. And then the other half of the year that goes with that is going to be tacked on at the end. So if you have a seven year piece of equipment, you're actually going to have a half a year the first year, and then years two through seven, you'll have a whole year's worth of depreciation, and then in year eight, you'll get the other half a year that you didn't get in year one. And you may elect to use tables based on straight line instead if you want to. I never see that done, but it is there and available if you want to. In class, we'll be using the regular makers tables that, again, table 7.2 on D2L. There's also another table there that shows you for 
real estate, which uh, we will talk about later. Now, if you choose to use that straight line, then you're, you have to use that straight line, not just for like one piece of equipment. You have to use it for all property in a given class. What does that mean? So that means like your five-year property is a class of property. So if you choose straight line for one five-year piece of equipment, all your five-year pieces of equipment have to be on straight line. If you choose uh, the regular makers for one piece of seven-year equipment, you have to use makers for all your seven-year equipment. But you could use straight line on all your five-year equipment and, and makers on all your seven-year equipment. In this class, we just use maker. So, uh, but I'm just letting you know um, in case in the future at a job, you see that sometimes they have used uh, the straight line method. Okay, here's an example. On March the 1st, Nature Attack Company purchased furniture for 180000 what is the recovery period and depreciation? Okay, so if we go back here, okay, uh, the recovery period is kind of another um, way of saying useful life, okay? So the recovery period for the furniture is going to be seven year period. And we got that off of seven table 7.1 to see that it's a seven year asset. Okay, to use table 7.2 to get the percentages. Okay, so let me see here. I'll have to. Uh, we'll have to end the show and we'll have to come back into this show. Uh, here is table 7.1 that's on D2L. It shows you three year, five year, et cetera. Um, and what is all included in those types? Here is table 7.2, which is also posted on D2L. And what you do, you first of all, you look at the title and make sure it's the one you want. Accelerated depreciation for personal property. What does personal property mean? Well, real property is land and buildings. Personal property is anything else. Any other kind of asset that the business owns would be called personal property. Furniture, computers, equipment, whatever is all called personal property. So this is accelerated depreciation for personal property. So we would not use this table for, for buildings, okay? It's assuming the half year convention. Remember that means that we're gonna take a half a year off the first year um, and then tack the other half year on at the end. So we can see it with this five year here that there's actually the last little bit is on year six. For the seven year, we can see the last little bit is on year eight. Okay, so there's a, that a little bit that's tacked it after uh, the end of this five or seven years. And this is for property placed in service after December 31st, 1986. Some of you probably weren't even born by 1986, but we've been using these same tables all the way since 1987, okay? So in this case, we had $180,000 of furniture and it was uh, seven-year furniture 
and we're in recovery year number one, the first year of owning it, okay? And it says 14.29. So we're going to take 14.29% times the cost of 180000 In the next year, we're in recovery year two, okay? We're going to take 24.49% times the original cost of 180000 Okay, so here we see that the 180000 cost times that year's percentage off the table. 0.1429 was for the recovery year one. And if I multiply that out, it's 25722 That's how much depreciation we would get to take, okay, uh, on our tax return. Year two, okay, remember that was 24.49%. You move the decimal place over to the left two places. So 180000 times 0.2449. 44,082, that's how much we would take next year on our tax return for this piece of equipment. So we would end up with seven primary years, and then we'd get that last little bit on the eighth year. And then once it's fully depreciated, even if we're still using it and it's still good, then we just stop depreciating it. Okay, we have fully depreciated. You cannot depreciate it anymore once it's fully depreciated. So you have to keep track of it. Okay, example two. On February 3rd, Bad Boy Bling LLC bought a computer for $12,000. What is the recovery period and depreciation? If we look on table 7.1, and again, we can go back. That's one of the ones you need to memorize, the computer stuff, and that includes printers, all that kind of stuff, is five year. Okay? Okay, so we would go back to table 7.2, we just were at, and we would look up the five year column, and we would see that year one is 20%. And year two is 32%. So I would take the 12,000 times 20%, that's 2,400. 12,000 times the 32%, and that's 3,840. So on year one on our tax return, we would take $2,400 for that particular depreciation for that uh, computer. Here's another example. Nicole purchases a cherry desk, an executive chair for use in her engineering firm on July 16, 2019 for $81.50. What is her depreciation for 2019 using half-year convention and maker's tables? And what about for 2020? Okay. So first, we'd have to go to table 7.1, and we can see that the business furniture has a seven-year life. Then we go to table uh, two, say table 7.2, and we look up on the seven-year column, and year one is 14.29%, year two is 24.49%. So for 2019, which is recovery year one, the first year that we had the stuff, we would take the 8150 times 14.29%, which is 0.1429, we get 1165. For the second year that we own it, we're in recovery year two, that's 2020, we take the original cost, 8150 times the 24.49% on the table, we get 1996. There's also a thing, we talked about the half-year convention. There's also, also a thing called mid-quarter convention. That's required if the taxpayer purchases more than 40% of their total personal property assets 
in the last quarter of the tax year. So the uh, year is divided into quarters. A uh, year is 12 months, so a quarter of a year is three months. So the last three months of the tax year, so for most of us, that would be October, November, December. If you buy a bunch of stuff at the very end of the year, and then you want to get a whole half a year's depreciation, which is what regular half-year convention makers does, then the, they feel like, oh, uh, no, you shouldn't be able to do that. So they have this special mid-quarter convention in which it calculates your depreciation based on each piece being purchased in the middle of a certain quarter. It's a little bit more complex. There are separate tables for it. You wouldn't use that table 7.2 like we have because that's based on half-year convention. However, it, this does exclude Section 179 property, which we're going to talk about in the next video. We'll talk about Section 179. And most people who, most businesses that buy equipment at the end of the year, they're just going to shove it in Section 179. Okay, and so uh, since this doesn't apply to the Section 179, it's very rare that you see this having to be used. So in our class, you will never have to use it. However, there might be a true false multiple choice question on mid-quarter convention on the test. So you should know that it exists, okay, but we won't have to use it. Okay, for real estate, of course, again, uh, we talked about real property and personal property. A real property is your land and buildings, and we never depreciate land. So this is talking about buildings. Now, there's two kinds of buildings that the IRS has tables for. One of them is residential real estate. Residential means people are living in there. Okay, so it is a building, that a house, okay, that people are living in. And this is for rental, okay? A residential rental building that's being used for people to live in that you're renting out, okay? Then you get to use 27 and a half years um, as your useful life, as your recovery period, okay? Non-residential real estate, meaning people are not living in there. So this would be like a commercial building, your shop, your store, or some other building, a uh, farm, uh, barns, you know, some building that is not having people living in it and being rented out. So any other building besides residential rental is a non-residential rental real estate, and it's going to be 39 years. Real assets are depreciated using a straight line method, so they don't have an accelerated method where there's more up front and then less later on. It's, it just smooths it out over the period. There is a mid-month convention, which means that you have to know what month you purchased that building. And then it's going to assume that the purchase of the building was made in the middle of that particular month. So if you purchase the building in June, it's going to assume the um, calculations on the tables, assume that you purchased it in on June 15th, whether you purchased it on the 1st of June or June 30th. Okay, this is used for all uh, real property acquired after 1986. And there may be some buildings that were still, that you might come across if you're doing tax returns or something. You may come across some company that still has a building that they purchased before or 1986 or before and which case that there was a different system uh, for that. 
And so you would have to look those up. Those tables are still available. Okay, these rates for real property are found on table 7.4 um, on D2L. Okay, so Gwen purchased a residential house on August 1st of 19th for $290,000, including land cost of $50,000. What is her depreciation for 2019 and for 2020? So first of all, we have to figure out what is her total recovery period. This is a residential uh, rental house. And so residential rental, we're going to use the 27 and a half year period. Okay. And we are not going to use land. Land cannot be depreciated. So we have to subtract that. So the $290,000 minus the $50,000. So we have $240,000 that we're going to calculate. Okay, so now we need to go find table 7.4. I don't appear to have it here, so. Okay, so here is table uh, 7.4, and uh, it says straight line depreciation for real property, assuming mid-month convention. So we know we're at the right place. There's a ton of tables, and you have to make sure that you're on the correct table. Okay, here is one that says 27 and a half year residential real property. And this one says 39 year non-residential property. So we want the uh, 27 and a half year property. Now, it's divided on this column, recovery year one. Then you have recovery year two through 18, and then 19 through 27, and 28 and 29. Okay, so, um, and then across the top, you have numbers one through 12, which represent the month. So she bought this in. August, which is month eight. So we're going to use this column here. Now, this is her first recovery year. So we'll use this first number. Uh, let's see. Okay. So here we go. 1.364 for the first year for 2019. And for the second year, Okay, we use 3.636. And again, these are percentages, and we're going to multiply them times the actual cost. Okay, so... Um, we have 27 and a half years is what we figured out. The first recovery year, the eighth month, we saw was 1.364%. So we take the 290,000, we subtract out the land, that's 240,000. We multiply that times the 0 0.01364, which is we, mul we moved our decimal over two places to the left to get that. And that equals $3,274 for 2019. Okay, looks like we didn't do 2020 here, but we would have taken the 240,000 times the 0 .03636 uh, number that we got off the table for the second year, recovery year, we would have multiplied that times the 240,000, and that would have showed us 
how much we would get for our tax return um, for that particular building for 2020.